This video will, I hope, help you to look at your photos with new eyes. If maybe you're questioning your life in photography, be it hobby or career, perhaps my story will help you to recognize the good things that come through the lens of your camera and how to treat them. And it will, I hope, interest my older viewers, but just as much I hope to reach younger photographers who might have something to learn in this regard. Should some challenge stand between you and your photographic ambitions, I want to explore the possibility that your photos already contain the seeds of perfection. Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me. I know from YouTube analytics that the demographic of my audience is fairly diverse. And though my fellow ancients are in the minority, I know my audience aren't all spring chickens and that some of those uh, grizzled camera connoisseurs appreciate my content. At any rate, this video is at least partially about the challenge of staying relevant as an aging photographer in these days of Instagram image proliferation. Not that making any kind of art is the easiest path to self-esteem or riches, but photography has always suffered a kind of inherent devaluation simply by the fact that it's in and of itself a weapon of mass production. In setting up my new computer, a Mac Studio with four terabytes of internal SSD storage, I was determined to wrestle some organization into years of neglected nested folders and scattered files. Photography is also, by its very nature, a companion to or even instigator of nostalgia. So I found myself sorting through masses of images, everything from alternate edits of my vintage Vancouver portfolio, 35 millimeter and medium format film scans, to ridiculously low resolution snapshots of my grandkids, nieces and nephews. During the assembly of my new computer, one of the chores we all face when we get a new computer, especially when faced with the adoption of a new technology like Apple's M1 chips, is facing the possibility that some peripheral or app is not going to work with the new technology. Sorry to ramble <laughs> again, but one such issue arose in relation to my old, in tech terms, Canon PIXMA printer. No drivers available from Canon for this unit for the latest OS. I mention this so I can pass it on as info for the um, uninitiated. I had a similar fight with my Epson 4900. It's also getting on in age. I think it debuted in around 2011. It's been supplanted by the SureColor P5000, but it's still a fine printer and I don't intend to replace it until it or I <laughs> move on to um, inkjet heaven. I have no idea how I fixed the issue with that printer. I uninstalled and installed it a few times and the tech goblins finally got tired of taunting me. To test my Epson Perfection 7500 Pro scanner with the Mac Studio, thank goodness there were M1 compliant drivers for that, and the Epson printer, I scanned and printed a Kodachrome that um, just recently found its way back to me. Long story. Anyway, it's a snapshot taken perhaps by my dad of my high school sweetheart and I sitting on the lawn outside our family home at the time. We'd just returned from an adventurous trip to Mexico where my British passport was refused by Mexican border guards, sending us back to San Diego for a visa, which was still refused when I presented it the next day at San Ysidro Customs. Now, there's a turnaround <laughs> for fans of the wall. That's a long story, but all contained in the photograph for me. Natalie's tears seemed to melt the officious guard's heart, and we had our holiday in Baja, as our tanned young bodies show, <laughs> except for my legs. <laughs> What's with that? We were barely 19. So, though I've survived four decades as a commercial photographer, and I have terabytes, not to mention filing cabinets crammed with the results of that part of my career, I'm no different really to any hobbyist photographer who treasures their family photographs. This video isn't about a backup strategy, maybe uh, at a later date when I get my house in order. I've been thinking in the shower again, more about how all these memories stand in relation to, well, my original love for this photography life. 
So I'm speaking from the point of view of someone who became infatuated with the magic of photographic imagery, watching the latent image become real before my eyes as the paper developed in the trays of my father's attic darkroom way back many years ago. I'm not so sure that my admitted struggle with relevance is only the lot of the aged, because surely every photographer beyond that age of innocence or initial romance finds themselves in need of some kind of rekindling of their passion for pictures. At this point, 70, and starting to feel the limits of age, I have to face the fact that I'm not going to be hauling my cameras to the summits of mountains anymore. And I have to say, you know, I'm terribly jealous of those young mountaineers who can today record their adventures with action cameras and drones. We had our Grolies and Super 8 cine cameras, but the latter certainly weren't lightweight. And let's face it, couldn't shoot 10-bit 4K and focus automatically. Does it matter that those photos of my bygone can't compete for what we call IQ with today's 45 megapixel files? That the old 8mm cines I've had digitized or soft, grainy and scratched? Aside from what I see as the <laughs> amusing conceit of adding such analog effects to digital images, is there something special about the photos we all have in our collections, either on hard drives or in hard copy albums? Does it matter? Where were we? <laughs> At this point in my long and winding photographic journey, I feel like a bit of an imposter. I mean, I have a, an office outfitted with enough high-tech stuff that I would have killed for back in the days when I was scaling mountains as well as photographing the tools of the trade. But now, aside from these YouTube videos and the occasional freelance job, most of my work is self-assigned. And I'm not complaining. I don't miss catering to the whims of art directors and studio managers or the overheads associated with maintaining my own studio. So a garage it is. <laughs> I've come full circle from the first converted garage that I had in 1980-81. Since I don't have so many clients lighting a fire under my creative uh, butt, what I'm trying to get at here for my own edification, and hopefully you might get something out of it, or offer something of your experience in the comments. There should be no excuses. I should be thrilled and free to reconnect with my original motivation, the joy of photography that sent me out onto the streets and into the hills with my camera, even after I'd spent a long day in the studio shooting catalog photos of camp stoves and light fixtures. What I've seen in my archives recently reminds me that every family photo, every snapshot from the street, they're a precious record of my place in the world. They don't need the approval of any atelier or arts council. Although some of my photos have found a place in corporate collections, books, magazines, and newspapers, and national museums, to be honest, I have much better unheralded photos that'll likely never see the light of day unless I force them on you in one of these videos. We would all like to think our work is relevant. We crave recognition, but social media, I think, has trained us to define our worth by likes from strangers. Not that I don't appreciate the kindness of strangers. There's something else I worked on during a break from YouTube this um, summer, and it's something it's been on the back burner the last couple of years while I've been working to feed the algorithm. Books. I love books, and I have a fairly decent collection of photo books that have been tremendously inspirational to me over the years. And aside from aforementioned cameos, I guess you might call them, I haven't been successful in convincing a publisher to gamble their resources on a collection of my photos. I have an editor <laughs> who'd love to see my work in book form, but they don't make decisions when it comes to what gets published by the publisher they work for. So I'm going to self-publish. Let me know if you'd be interested in that journey. And I'd be thrilled to receive tips from anyone actually who's traveled that road ahead of me. I already have a couple of dormant things in the pipeline, <laughs> as in sitting in another folder in Lightroom. And the plan is to send them to Blurb for printing. 
again, I'd be happy to hear from those of you with experience, anybody who's done that. I don't think it makes sense to repeat a lot of the vanity publishing how-to stuff already represented on YouTube, but if you're interested to see the results of my foray, yeah, please let me know. Your photos are important. My photos are important. Our inspiration, I think it's safe to say, comes from photographing the things that we love, that we're most interested in. Those are the subjects most likely to produce good, creative photos. They don't have to follow any rules, the rule of thirds, frames, whatever. During my deep dive into neglected, forgotten folders, my organizational blitz, I wasn't saying, damn, if I just followed this rule or that. And incidentally, you're never going to see a top five or seven or ten or whatever number it is, composition rules you need to know video on this channel. Not going to happen. Now, unless the photos were really trash can worthy, I was most often taken by atmosphere and, and the content of the images. What do I mean by atmosphere? Uh, it's a nebulous term for you. Well, I don't, really, I don't really have a definition. It's either there for the viewer or it's not. And it's definitely a personal thing. But I know it, or rather, I feel it when it's there. And as far as my personal photos, I know when it's worth printing. Well, for sure, I know once it's printed, whether it was a waste of paper or not. And that's another worthwhile topic today. I feel as though I never really connect with a still photo on a screen. While photographs arranged in a book or on a gallery wall can be presented as the photographer chooses, and it goes without saying, in a material and tactile way that's impossible to reproduce online. And we can be sure, we can be more confident we're seeing the images as the creator intended. So, <laughs> in trying to pull together another of uh, my discursive rambles, I'm facing new challenges in my photography. I can't, short of helicopter transportation, get my cameras to remote locations. Like Akira Kurosawa's hunter Dursu Uzawa, my eyesight is not what it was, despite recent cataract surgery. I don't have commercial assignments to push me into the studio or out on location. And here's a biggie. I'm the budgeting director, and I can assure you budgets for any project are pretty limited, especially after this latest big technology upgrade, which, and here's a perspective no young photographer is burdened by. It'll likely be my last big update. So it is, we hope, that our archive of photos might live on. I mean, the most compelling folders I recently examined contain photos of my late father and mother. My dad died in 2013, and mom followed in late 2020. The first photo I ever made was of my father. I'm sure he set the exposure of whatnot on his glass plate camera, but I can remember the day very clearly. I made hundreds more photos of my parents with everything from Kodak Brownie to my first Nikon, medium format film cameras to modern DSLRs. And there are masterpieces amongst them. And I'm sure you have all kinds of masterpieces in your collections. Right up there with Jacques-Henri Lartigue. I'm not kidding, and I've seen Lartigue's work firsthand. In his work, we see through the eyes of a child, at least in his early work. We don't necessarily see his privileged social position, though I guess maybe uh, the average Parisian didn't get to hang out at car races and biplane test flights. What we do see is the joie de vivre and an absolute fascination with life around him. We see movement and play. If you know some biography, you know Lartigue loved his cameras, and he was intrigued by people, the fashionable ladies of Paris, his cousins, games, new developments like cars and planes. Here's an idea. Find a random photo in your archive. Choose it not by technical excellence or compositional perfection. Choose it with your heart. And don't even think about how it might do on social media. That's a creativity killer right there. You're not going to post it anywhere online. You're going to print it or have it printed. Matt and frame it. Give it a special place on the wall. Treat it as if it's important. Because maybe it is, and it was just waiting to be acknowledged by you. Hell, why not collect a dozen or two and make a real book, not a Facebook? 
like a bunch of images pasted in a scrapbook like we used to do. Caption them or, or just let them speak for themselves. It'll be perfect. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. If you did, please give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Cheers. We'll see you later.